So let's go back to this idea of autocorrelation. And recall, right, for sun signal g of t, if this is an energy signal, we can find the energy signal density uh, with this in, in the frequency domain. And for a lot of energy signals, right, it's pretty easy to do the Fourier transform. So why would you ever bother with doing autocorrelation, which is usually a little bit difficult. difficult. So we learned how to, how to take the autocorrelation for energy signals. And we saw that there is some relationship between ener energy signals, autocorrelation, energy spectral density. So why did we even bother that uh, with doing that for the energy signals? Well, the reason is that there's more of an application to power signals. So the Fourier uh, transform of a power signal generally will not exist. Uh, only signals, which are a function of, of the time, are going to have these uh, Fourier transforms. And so these uh, power signals are not always going to have a, a Fourier transform. So you can't rely on the same method of taking the Fourier transform to get the energy signal density if you're dealing with a power signal. So messages, like random pulses, uh, are not actually a, a function of time. You can't make a, a time definition of them. And new, new information is, is going to be difficult or impossible to make as a function of time. If you could do that, then it might not be considered new information. Therefore, you can use autocorrelation. And you can take autocorrelation of power signals uh, using uh, statistical information. And the meaning behind this is that the more you go into advanced communications systems, if you're dealing with power signals, you're going to have to use this autocorrelation because you just simply may not be able to deal with the Fourier transform. So you wish you could do the Fourier transform, but you can't do it. So therefore, uh, you may need to end up relying on autocorrelation. And so the point of dealing with autocorrelation for the energy signal is to build up so that you can see, okay, yes, there is still this symmetry where you can use autocorrelation for the energy signal, even if it's a little harder. You can use it for the power signal. And the power signal, as you go further, uh, you may actually be required to use the autocorrelation since you can't use all the Fourier uh, techniques. So autocorrelation is, you can think of this as a bridge from the Fourier techniques that are useful with energy signals to power and random signals.